Five panellists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. What, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just decolonize you. Hi fellow advocates, one thing that goes without saying at this time is that we're all in it together. A hungry man is an angry man. The Nigerian government announced that Lagos State, Ogun State and Abuja will be on lockdown for two weeks and that the most vulnerable will be given palliatives to help sustain them during this period. We were informed during the president's broadcast that the poor would be given 20,000 naira each, among other things. Two weeks later, I'm yet to hear that anyone has received this money. Prior to the lockdown, Nigeria was already teetering on the brink with a very high rate of unemployment and insecurity engulfing the nation. Nigeria was described as the poverty capital of the world that should tell you how bad things were then. With the arrival of the coronavirus pandemic and the proposal of a lockdown, it was extremely vital that we got access and distribution of palliatives right. But it seems that this has not been the case, and now we have an even bigger insecurity problem on our hands. In the last two weeks, I have seen lots of videos with citizens crying out for food, light and monetary assistance. Many have taken to the streets to protest and latest reports confirm that armed robberies are on the increase as people have become desperate. Many youths now line the roads, defying the lockdown and begging for money. Many estates have had to step up their security to keep the impending siege at bay. Even the security operatives manning the lockdown are also begging. A few days ago, we received news that the lockdown will be extended indefinitely or for as long as is necessary. I can appreciate the need for the extension, but it also strikes fear in my heart. If these mega palliative measures don't get to the vulnerable immediately, it wouldn't be an exaggeration to say that we are sitting on a time bomb which will explode at any moment. A clear system of identification and distribution needs to be put in place and all monies must be accounted for. We all know that a hungry man is an angry man. If we don't take care of our poor, then we all become targets in their quest to survive. So my point is, I think, um, I, I, um, which, which is advocacy actually speaks to the earlier point we raised during the um, earlier discussions about um, how the government is, didn't really think this thing through in terms of the lockdown, because people are getting really angry. And people are getting angry for a number of reasons. Okay. One is very historical. Um, the fact that mm -hmm. people were already people were already pauperized mm, to start yeah, with and disenfranchised. Uh, and disenfranchised and then you lock them up you say you know um, don't move no movement people that depend on as you said two dollars a day if they don't go out to hustle they can't eat the next day so half dollar um, or whatever so so the people are already angry so I think this thing, and, and so many people have talked about it, even in India where they have a national lockdown, they're seen, and they started um, stepping down a little bit and, and, and advocating for what they call a community action, okay. which basically says that at the community level, we identified high-risk areas, yeah. yeah, 
do the sampling of testing there to find out what level of exposure there is to the virus in those communities. And then have businesses in those areas sort of limit their movement within the certain community, but allow people to move around within that community as well. So that if there's any infection, it doesn't go out of that community, okay. but allow businesses to go on. Because you have to take the steps. If, look at people where people that are living in, in, in slums where they have 15 persons to a room or, or face me, I face you, mm -hmm. and there's no electricity, there's, there's lack of water. How do you say lockdown? Mm. If so, if someone gets infected there, it's breeding ground. It's actually a dangerous breeding ground for, for, for the virus. Uh, so I, I think th uh, there, there has to be who, who cleverness to, in terms to, of how to the government should recap. Recap. Yes, yes um, yeah. I think Jay is waiting to recap on, interject on, on this uh, yeah. topic. <laughs> You well, I mean, I, I, the reason, I mean, I brought that topic on was because it's just clearly obvious. I mean, in the last uh, few days, um, both myself and my mom have both received text messages from people who ordinarily won't even send messages to us. You know, they're like, like that far removed from us, but they are hungry. They're telling us that their children haven't eaten. You know, you can just imagine a mother with three children, you know, uh, and the child is saying, mommy, I'm hungry. Can you just imagine a scenario like that? And this is a woman that normally would go out, maybe she's a hairdresser, makes her money, comes back, and then all of a sudden, nothing. You know, so it, it really does. And then you can now hear there's so many cases of insecurity going on on the streets, on the road. The other day, I was actually quite scared to go out because I, I went out and I saw like a group of men, you know, walking down the street together. And I didn't know whether they were coming to attack uh, road users or whatever the case may be. But if they did, I wouldn't be surprised because they're hungry. I have people coming to my window begging. Now they're begging very soon. Who knows what it's going to turn into? So what I'm basically advocating for is just telling the, you know, the government that we need to step this thing up. This one of saying that you've given out how many trillions of Naira that nobody can confirm that they've actually done. Well, what's, you know, no, you can't you, give out palliatives, uh, audio palliatives at this point in time. Now we want some real measures. We need things to happen. Otherwise, we're all sitting ducks, basically. Yeah, yeah, well, so. That's where I want to take it from. Are we sitting ducks? Because I want to divide uh, at the risk of sounding insensitive. I want to split these hungry men up a bit because I've never really... Well, I'm, coming, I'm coming, I'm coming. Let me land the point. Dogs. Because I, I, I have... I, I have I'm coming, quick, uh, Let me land the point. point. I have an issue with when people seem to link a violent and a certain lawless response to, oh, they're justified because uh, Boko Haram are justified. Anybody's justified in getting angry. So I'm, I'm, I'm coming. I, I haven't gotten to where I'm going. I haven't gotten to where I'm going. So my point is okay. really to say, yes, I understand. And, and when Emeka started talking, I, I could see more of maybe something I could have missed in the way I'm approaching it, in the sense that, mm. look, that, and when you even started giving examples of people who are approaching you, these people are hungry mm -hmm. and they wouldn't be in this situation but for the lockdown, let's assume. Mm -hmm. But there's some people who are just opportunists and let's not try and, let's That's not try true. and model it up. Yeah. That those people are gonna burn down houses, they're gonna, that those people, whether you had lockdown or not, they were not youthful, you profitably engaged. Absolutely. So just lockdown okay. and, and to be and area okay. boys. Okay. And, and I'm after those ones, well, I want yes. them to be the brought is, under check. I can be living. Yeah, well, the fact is, there are opportunists, okay. Okay. but the, the lockdown and the hunger has given them a reason to come out and mix with the people okay. that okay. really I'm, I'm are okay. in I get what you're saying. trouble. Huh? Yeah. So, yeah, so you can't, you, there's no point trying to differentiate because it's only when you remove the lockdown and give people the freedom to go back okay. to work can we now see these people and okay. say, okay, Expose these people them. are the people causing problems. So, like, for instance, now we're sitting ducks. I can tell you that in Gowon Estate in Yanapaja, yes, they released a fake video, but I actually got a real uh, verifiable video mm. of what happened. And people were break, trying to get into those estates. In my estate currently now, we've had to um, bring in the Mopoles and um, armed guards now because of the fear that we're going to be under siege at any point. You know, so so it's this real. is a worry. Okay. And, you, um, you, you, you know, we didn't quickly. cause this problem. So now quickly. how come we're, Uche. we're now the ones handing out the palliatives that the government don't want to hand out? Yeah. And now we're the ones having to protect ourselves at the same time as well. Yeah, but, but I, I, I agree with you. And that's where I want to quickly differentiate yeah, from what you said, Ekene. Mm. You see, it's also very common for people to assume that it is only those people who do everyday hustling 
that you know affected by affected. the affected no, I, I was right. affected no, I know I know I had to because it took me unaware yeah. I didn't expect that the banks were going to be shut no. and I had transaction that has spent money on expecting payment and then all of a sudden your client says oh look because of this projection we can't mm -hmm. release money now yeah. Yeah. and then you had to now call your friends who ordinarily would not believe you mm. that look I know you, you can you can be happening to you now you are a big man now mm. you know and here you are you need to stock up all of a sudden your your kids are coming back home yes. and you are flat footed yes. there are so many people I reached out I spoke to some of my friends and then some of them were even ashamed to speak out their problems wow. senior but lawyers the reason I'm differentiating is that those ones will not get burned they, they, they won't they won't go steal. so that, like, like Uche had said. Some of these persons, the ones who are used to, you've given them opportunity now to say, well, look, even before, we used to beg and then we'll get people. Now there is nobody on the street to beg from. Mm. I can't sit down here and go hungry. Some of them will use such opportunity to say, well, even mm -hmm. there are some who will, okay, like a, a friend of mine, a, uh, my, my church people, my, uh, my church, for example, the service and the poor society in my church, needed to buy small bags of rice to share. And do you know when they went to take delivery of those rice, they were almost mobbed by, by um, a group of uh, hangers-on. And, and so it, it's, it's, it's real, but I agree with you, it's not a justification for, for crime. But we need to get things right. Uche, good of you to drop in on us. We are certainly all in it together. After the break, some might say, I'm following Uche's footsteps. I love to follow Uche's footsteps, you know. <laughs> <laughs> if care is not taken, soon the poor will have nothing to eat but the rich. It's a saying common to us in Africa because of lack of care for the poor by the rich. But I'm afraid if care is not taken, that saying might soon be a reality than just a white saying. COVID-19 will bring out the beast in all of us. Why it has been argued that the cessation of movement Physical distancing measures and the prohibition of mass gathering remain the most efficient and effective way of reducing the transmission of COVID-19 virus. Can our society and system actually sustain these measures against our current economic and infrastructural reality? Then a jam question for government to answer, not be you. The president in his nationwide address to Nigeria on the 13th of April 2020 answered the question in the affirmative when he admitted that the subs substance of about 75% of Nigeria depend on their ability to go out, as their livelihood depends on their daily hustling. Yet, we are to sit at home for another 14 days. And nobody's bothered about our hustling or pay, as even the little we had stuck went bad because of power failure to preserve it. Double jeopardy, you will say. You'll be very shocked to find professionals like medical doctors, lawyers like me, engineers, architecture, among this bracket of hustlers, who depend on daily coins to sustain their livelihood, majority of whom are running SMEs. So don't think it's only tomato or pepper sellers that depend on daily hustling to feed. Despite this awareness and the fact that no country can afford the full impact of a sustained restriction of movement on its economy, countries that are far better than us in terms of economy and infrastructure-wise have locked down. So our federal government, being a product of copy and paste approach to problems, once again imposed a further 14 days lockdown in Lagos, Abuja, and Ogun. Because if we find the cure to the virus, they will change our name from Nigeria to something else. So let's mark time for Yibo to get the virus. Hmm. Wow. Well, one is not against any reasonable measure taken by federal government to save lives and properties. It would have been expected that against the reality of the hardship, government should have collaborated more with state government on disbursement of palliatives or give state government a free hand and the needed financial support to treat each case on its own merit, rather than this bad wagon effect of state governors locking down all states once the federal government locked down Abuja and Lagos. Why don't we even have people who think outside the box? This has further exposed our need inadequacies and lack of infrastructure. Where the SM is going to get money to pay salaries for the month of April, when they hardly worked for that month? And is government going to give them palliative to what will be the criteria? And if salaries are not paid, what becomes of workers who for no fault of theirs are asked to stay at home? Can you say they didn't work and so won't get paid? You know, go for new. Also, why should offices that have that were completely shut down for the month of April pay light bill simply because they are postpaid meter billing? 
with most bills even estimated than another kettle when nobody don't even think. If I raise the issue of pay as you go taxes, that one is a whole topic for discussion another day. Without a social security in place, how do we sustain the poor? Some who are already restless, as armed robbers have started attacking you know, some states, as reported in Lagos and Ogo recently. Please don't tell me about the social intervention program of the federal government, as the initial disbursement is still creating a whole lot of controversy, as those who are said to have benefited are yet to receive anything, while those disposing are, are said to be smiling to the bank. Nobody will talk, I'm on a national assembly, go and ask them. I would therefore advocate that we should not only immediately commission our health experts to begin to find the cure, as this can be Africans opportunity to step up to the plate, but to also immediately begin to put social security safety net in place to cushion the effect of hardship that everyday situations such as these impose on the honorary Nigeria. Failure wish. The rich in Nigeria might be surprised very soon that the worst virus is not COVID-19, but the poor who will have nothing left to eat but the rich. To them that have yes, let them hear. Okay, let me take it from our last advocacy, which is, uh, and then link it to yours. You know, my sister, because she lived in South Africa for a while, she was giving us, you know, the, what looked like, the top, the, what was lying ahead of us. And she said, oh, the people in South Africa are already burning schools. And I said, your people are too angry in South Africa. Every small thing, they burn schools and houses. Very short-sighted. So I get annoyed when people use anger as a reaction, but I sympathize. I'm now saying to myself, okay, those of them who want to be angry, let them be angry. Some of us need to now focus our anger on being constructive. We don't have a welfare state. We've never had. It's not going to manifest overnight. But let's not leave this COVID-19 era and go back to business as usual. Because what it has exposed is that the gap is too wide. The people who don't have, have nothing. And even like you're saying, with this COVID-19, even those who thought they had are slipping into the have-nots. Yes. We need that welfare system to begin to, people need to be drafting it now, campaigning for it. All this nonsense, generator ban bill and rubbish they've wasted our time with. That's not what we need. The country needs health care, you know, bills that ensure that we get a certain minimum amount of investment in our healthcare systems, bills that deal with the weakest link. Because for me, a country is only as great as its weakest link. So widows, um, the poor people, the orphans, the people who are, don't have, they need to have those people who are in slums. We need to cater for them because if, if we don't do that, I'm sorry, we're not going anywhere. We're going backwards. So let's prioritize that. It's enough of all this buying jeeps to, to deal with bad roads, buying generators to deal with bad. We now need to say, what can we do so that at the very minimum, people can have a lifestyle that doesn't make them like animals, where all they can do now is get angry. Uh, imagine, you get angry and then what? It, it, for it, me, it's a pointless so, reaction. Sorry, Emeka, yeah. because for me, I'm, I'm looking at the, I'm thinking ahead, looking at the crisis ahead of us. At the end of April, small and medium scale enterprises are going to pay salaries. First, depending on the mindset of the man who is at top there, oh, these people have not worked. I have not worked. So where do I get money to pay salaries to these people? Mm. There are some bills that will come, like NEPA bill, bill, electricity. It's all running So fast. where do I get money to pay this? I have not and worked. And like UK, where they're giving them 80% of so salaries. The palliative the government. that government is giving, government is even telling you that if you don't, if you have up to 5,000 naira, so you are not qualified. Oh my. And so this small and medium scale enterprise that is the driver of every economy, yeah. we are, is going to collapse if care is not taken. And so some of the people that are working in these sectors, a lot of them are going to fall down the ladder also. Some of them who are at home now thinking that, you know, some, somebody asked me yesterday, why will, you know, the telecom companies bring out 3 billion naira, for example, to pay wages when they believe that you know majority of these people have not worked. That's a big company. I'm, I'm not sure I like the, that logic. No, no. I, and I, I told him, I said, look, to for it. you people, we are, we are, we are working because we they are paying, we are recharging our phones. Mm. That's even different. Mm. Somebody like me, I have not worked since, even before the federal government locked down. The, federal, the state government locked down. You know, I had locked down the office. Yesterday, I had to go pay, or day before yesterday, I had to go pay NEPA bill. For, for last month, because I'm on an um, uh, estimated billing. Okay. We have been on that back and forth. I can imagine some other person, and I have staff to pay at the end of the month. Oh, wow. And so many other people. I can't deny them salaries, even though I don't have. Yeah. You know, because, so, the, you know, so all of this, I expect, I need government to be thinking. So, how do we ensure so, that, so, so this you know, goes we're back cushion to, this yeah. gap? So this goes back to, like Ken says, goes back to the discussion we had, um, the, the last advocacy about uh, Uche's advocacy. A hungry um, man. Uh, the angry, hungry man. 
or the hungry angry man. Yeah, we're also <laughs> angry. Um, Don't get it wrong. <laughs> the point is this, and, and I've said this before. We need to let people think solutions. Yes. What we're doing is just reacting to how do we stop the spread. And we, the one-track mind we have is, oh, let's isolate social distances. But there are very many other things that we can do because this virus just, just doesn't have consequence on, on, on our health. It also has a, the consequences on the health of our economy. And health of our economy has far more reaching consequences because what will happen is there'll be more suicides, there'll be more people out of work, there'll be more people who fall sick because of, they don't even have access to health care, generally speaking. So, I mean, on the palliative side, you know, I read the CBN intervention, 50 billion for SMEs, but that's a drop in the ocean to start with. And it's not even a, oh, it's not a grant. We don't it's, know it's how actually, they get it It's to actually a loan. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, it's actually loan, but you know, low interest loans. There's another hundred billion that the CBN has set aside um, uh, for healthcare industry as well. Um, we just want it to get so, to the right people, but, though. <laughs> but the question is, there has to be a holistic plan for how to deal with this problem um, beyond uh, because oil, as, as Libera said, has dropped Monica. to on the 30s. So we have a major crisis coming at us, coming you know, full full steam ahead. I think there has to be more discussions. We need a national leadership to step up to, you know, the, the, the biggest challenge. Or delegate. A, yeah, the <laughs> biggest challenge like this in any economy is not really, it's, it's, it's a feeling of confidence. Um, that's what makes people spend. That's what builds yeah. positive momentum. And when people, you're just hearing the anger and the, the negative vibes, but we need to have someone, and I, I hope that the vice president, who I think is one of the more, more cerebral, cerebral yeah, yes. more should step should up. This is time he should step up and be more, talk to the people more. Yeah. It's when um, you're having serious minded discussions like this, and it's over before it began, you may be thinking. We're back again next week, same time, same channel. Do keep your comments coming on Facebook, Plus TV Africa, hashtag The Advocate NG, or on Twitter and Instagram at plus TV, hashtag the advocate NG. To catch up with previous broadcasts, go to plustvafrica.com forward slash the advocate. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Plus TV Africa. Till next time, let's keep advocating for a better society. Bye. Bye. <laughs> five panelists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. That's I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you.